Hi. Any little babies? No. I'm filming Sammy. That's Sammy. She's our med staff. <laughs> she does stuff. She works in sick bay. We'll probably see her again someday. She's from Australia. She's uh, also a vet nurse. She's been here for six months now, I think. Yeah. International team of primate lovers. I guess was what you'd call it. Or just a bunch of kooky weirdos who think that it's a good idea to come live in the bush of South Africa, poop in toilets that are made of pits, and uh, sleep in wood cabins while trying to save monkeys from people that hate them. <laughs> How's that for a description? <laughs> There's intro enclosures everywhere, as you can see. Like, you go anywhere, you're gonna find monkeys. Look at this oldie. Man, I don't even know what your name is. So this is Camelot Troop that we're next to. Um, obviously, I was saying it was the biggest troop. Like, we came from that rock back there, we walked all the way around, now we're down here. Came around, now we're still along the Camelot Troop fence. But, uh, Sherman. He pulled in from Camelot Troop in November 2018 as weight loss and skin problems. Also geriatric, having extra food and meds. Let's go check out Sherman. This dude is a beast. Look at this old man. Mr. Sherman. Look at how old he is. Hey, a handsome old guy. Look at that ball sack. It's all like turning black, getting all weird and wrinkled and stuff. Look at those eyes. It's all scruffy. That's how you can tell when a monkey's getting old. Monkeys, monkeys everywhere. All right, we'll go. Now, we're just passing Camelot. Is it? There's the Camelot troop name thing, airlock, board stuff. Amazing. Woo, we can read. Um, <laughs> as I progressively run out of things to say, I'm just going to talk more and more nonsense. This is all Coco troop that I'm walking next to. This is where... Uh, Paloma, Elena, and uh, who were the first ones? Tommy and Lustique, I think. Jeez, that feels like ages ago. Um, they all, those four all went into this enclosure together. This section's kind of interesting, this intro enclosure, because it's like pretty big. There's this airlock overhang, and uh, you've got a one-legged monkey in here, uh, and two females, one male, Alec, Lolly, and Grace. So you see Alec dropped outside of a nature conservation wearing a nappy. He can get out of electric fence easily, so he grabs. Also humanized, two years old for Lolly, generally good natured. Has lived with other monkeys unsuccessfully. See? And then Sav Troop pulled her leg through the fence and bit her, and then she had to get her leg amputated. And Grace used to live in Coco Troop, but she's an escape artist, I guess. So now she's in here. Um, because they get out, they cause problems. So here's Alec, and he is, yeah. So that's not the happiest sound that he's making. That's sort of like, hello, uh, I see you, but I will also do things if you tell me things that I don't like. Um, but this is like a ridiculous little corridor because as you can see, he like has a place over you. There's left and right. They can easily just grab through the fence and yank you if they want to. Hi, Lolly. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. 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 That's happier sounds. Yeah. Yeah. I know. What are you doing? Hello, lady. Hi. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, one leg isn't that interesting so that's what she had to get amputated because it got pulled through the fence Pew. hey hey lady let's get real close up huh. twitchy monkeys she keeps doing this putting herself up to the fence like that because she wants me to groom her but again I'm not going to it'd be bad uh, bad hygiene it's super easy to um, transmit diseases and viruses and stuff to these guys because we're just like, our bodies just love the same viruses. And the stuff they get is crazy. It screws with us. And the stuff we get screws with them. So it's better not to touch them and mess with them just because you don't want to transmit anything and get them sick. And it's just not right. 
But, uh, yeah. She's a sweetheart. Everyone loves her. She even loves herself a lot, huh? Yeah. 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 All right. But here is our Samango enclosure. Um, just back behind me. I don't know if you can see. Hey, Mr. Mango. You see him? Yeah, there he is. Hey, buddy. How are you? So Mango is uh, what's known as a Samango. They like to live up in the mountains and stuff. They come from that village I was talking about, Hainitzburg. There's a bunch of them up in those areas. Um, he's a very cool dude. He also came in as an orphan. And uh, there's Jesse. So Jesse is a uh, Samango that has no arms. He was electrocuted up in that same area uh, by some faulty power lines and ended up in this like lady's house. Um, and she called us and his arms were really screwed up. So we took him to the vet. He had both of his arms amputated. But as you can see, he climbs no problem, gets around no problem. He lives with Mango and another little girl. And I don't know the little girl's name. She arrived like a month or two ago. Um, she's around the same age as Mango. But Mango, I have an affinity for. Mango came to the VMF uh, when I was doing the documentary. And he was like one of the last orphans of the season. So he was in Disneyland with the other vervet babies. And for the longest time, he just thought he was a vervet. Like he just would make vervet sounds. He wanted to hang out with the vervets. He was always doing his best to like try and escape onto the other side where uh, Sick Bay Troop is to go hang out with his vervet buddies over there. But he's just like the coolest little monkey. Like, I don't know. This dude just, oh, here's the little girl. I keep getting distracted while I'm telling you guys these stories because the other monkeys show up. But anyway, he's just the coolest little monkey. He like, he has the best attitude about everything. He's super chill. Um, I don't know, he just like, some monkeys get stressed out, some monkeys are weird. He just always seems to be having fun, like no matter what, even when he was alone in here or when he was living with like the two old geriatric uh, Samangos that just recently passed away. He was always just having a great time and like, playing just always playing always finding ways to entertain himself and just have a good little life he's really cool he's a lot of fun to watch and he's just you can see it in his face he like he just has a lot going on in that little brain of his he's a weirdo too yeah All right, let's go head over to Sick Bay and Disneyland and the baby cabins and all that stuff. Flip the camera around for a sec. So this is all Sick Bay troop on the left. Um, this is the troop that Abby went into recently. Uh, Nigella and Smarty. This one's just open, so there's some troop monkeys in here right now. Nervous monkos, I guess. Sick Bay Troop. So it's called Sick Bay Troop because this is our um, like emergency room, um, and then this is our sick bay over here. So it's not that the uh, troop itself has sick monkeys or anything like that. It's just that it's next to sick bay. And so it's called sick bay troop because the people who take care of sick bay also take care of this troop, which is, makes sense, right? It's convenient. So this is heading into our sick bay area. Sick bay. Let's see here. Everything's airlocked. This is where the meds are prepared. This is where sick monkeys are brought when they need to be monitored, um, taking extra care of. Right now, it's pretty full. It was really full the other day. Let's see, so you got Millie in here right now. Each one has this like little board. Kind of showing you guys this stuff in the uh, vlog episodes. But most of the monkeys end up in here in these crush cages. Uh, crush cages are the easiest way to like get the monkeys trapped and then you can uh, see these bars up top right here, those bars? The floor, when you pull those up, actually raises so you can crush the monkey up at the top and that way you can 
give them any sort of injections or things that you need to do, checking on them and stuff. That way they can't move. Um, yeah, it's an interesting, it's an interesting device. So this is sick bay. That's what you got. You got all these different, different enclosures, all over. Ten o'clock right now. I think most people are on break. Uh, like ten to ten thirty is the usual break time for everyone. Some some monkeys seriously just love to come in here, love taking a little break, show up all the time, have a vacation, get the good foods, get away from troop life, the stress, everything like that. Yeah. Everything gets prepped in there. So I mean, as you can see, like, we are in South Africa. We operate purely on donations and the fact that like volunteers come here and pay to be here and that money just goes into this and you can see it's like <laughs> this is very basic very bare bones everything is very simple here I mean this is this is what we have that's how you boil the water on that little stove right there at the gas tank these cabinets are who knows how old medical supplies are donations everything's donations everything's here because awesome people like you guys who help us out so yeah it takes a lot it takes a lot of money it takes a lot of time it takes a lot of effort to keep this stuff running to get this place you know okay all I'm saying is it's not as easy as you might think and it's definitely not luxury by any means and I think like I, what I'm trying to say I think is that like sometimes people ask questions like oh why don't you just do this or like wouldn't it be easy to just do that and it's like well yeah in a perfect world it would be but like you have to consider what we're working with and where we are and like like we don't have a postal service here like i know that sounds crazy but like the south african postal service doesn't work like there's not actually mail that gets delivered and if you somebody sends a package let's say from the u.s to here it'll take like six months to get here if it ever actually gets here and what they use here is just like local courier services um and like a fedex package i did a video for the dodo at one point and um, it was all about Jerry. I don't know if you guys saw that. You can check it out. But uh, they had me ship a hard drive, and that hard drive cost like a couple hundred dollars to ship. A hard drive that was like that big. It's crazy. So that's why it's like, it's not the easiest. There's a lot of things that it's like, yeah, it sounds great in theory, and we'd love to be able to do that, but in reality, like, it's just not possible. And I know it sounds crazy, but I think you're getting a better idea of stuff now by watching this. People often ask me, Kyle, where are we going to go next? And I say, I don't know. There's still a lot to see. How about main feed? That's really exciting. That's where all the food gets prepared. It's not really that exciting. But we'll go there. <laughs> Bro, I'm a main feed now. Um, so this is main feed. This is where all the food gets prepared. As you can see, little lug boxes, what we keep the food in. The monkeys is who eats is the foods is. Um, everything gets washed, all the bowls and plates and everything have to get washed, the volunteers help do that, and then everything gets prepared on these tables, and we keep big quantities of everything that the monkeys like to pillage, a bunch of bananas, and then everything gets brought about around on wheelbarrows, this is another area for food, we're actually really low on food right now, um, sweet potatoes are back here. Sometimes you can see all this stuff in the Bandit Diaries episodes where the monkeys are hanging out and they're just like stealing everything. But this is all main feed. Like I said, seriously low on food right now. Who's texting me? No one. Getting phantom vibrations. I just think I'm so popular, but I'm really not. Nobody loves me. Um, I'm losing it, guys. I'm losing it. It's the sun. I'm thirsty. It's the monkeys and the main feed. All right, so here's some banditos hanging out, hanging out, hanging around. They'll probably run away a little bit if I get too close. Look at this mama with her baby right now. That's funny. Upside down baby, huh? Hi, kids. So like I was saying about the whole, like, um, let's see here, being calm around them. Uh, they're really chill with me because I spent so much time with them. But generally, they don't like people. They don't want to hang around with anyone. Uh, and 
volunteers are always told to carry a stick and to keep their distance because the bandits do have the propensity to bite and to swipe and to challenge other people. But I've spent a lot of time with them and they're pretty chill. Now I'm just waiting for one to run up behind me and like slap me or something just to prove a point. But anyway, let's see if we can get a little closer. <laughs> That's Fluffy Witch. You can see her eye is uh, blind. I don't know who this dude is. <laughs> that was pretty cute. Yeah. Anyway, just a happy bandit family hanging around. That there is the baby cabins. Um, those are all the places that I always talk about in the baby episodes where the uh, babies go when they first arrive for quarantine. Got a spider web on my lens. <laughs> um, baby cabins on that side. Scrow troop on that side. And then that's the milk cabin where all the milks get prepared. Um, you guys have seen the baby cabins. I don't need to go in there. Let's see here. Here's Vera, Diane, Bernadette, and some other mom. Probably a polar or someone. Oh, no, it's not polar. It's a juvenile. And I don't know who it is. Maybe a Buffy. Look at those babos. They're doing so good. Look at that. Oh, man. This is like a sneak peek. Or maybe it'll happen after. But anyway. Look at that. That is Vera with a mom, Bernadette, and Diane, and they're all curled up, cuddled, happy together. That's awesome. Vera is finally becoming a real monkey. So this will probably come out after uh, all those baby episodes. So this will be a little bit late for you guys, but you can see that I'm excited right now at the time where uh, it's happening. That was a really close up shot of my face, huh? Anyway, that's super exciting. It's great news. So, we'll head down, say goodbye to Vera and Diane. Some more monkos, even more monkos. Look at that cute little baby in a tree. Hi, kids. Super angry at me right now. Telling me, buzz off, don't look at my baby. But also, if I don't make eye contact and don't acknowledge the aggression, they don't really know what to do they'll just continue to get angry. And I can just sort of stand here and act like everything's normal. Dun, 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 dun. Look at these dudes. <laughs> oh man. Ain't nothing like a serious groom session. It's like the epitome of relaxation. Just get down in the grass, flop over, nice shady, windy day. Very nice. Please, grooms, commence the grooming sensations. Whoa. Okay. Thought that was about to get a little uh, PG-13, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Just kidding. They're monkeys. Don't be gross. God, people, come on. That was the intro enclosure where Dixie and Darcy were the whole time. And Robert's in this side. Can you hear the goats? <laughs> like I said, we're surrounded by farms. The neighbor over there has tons of goats. This is the other neighbor on the other side of the property. So many goats, so many chickens. That's why in some of the videos you'll hear like livestock in the background. Usually it's coming from that farm. Skunky troops on the left, Robert troops on the right, heading up this path. Yeah, I've pretty much walked a loop and a zigzag around the entire VMF for this video. And I think you've got a better idea of how massive this place is and how much walking it involves here. Um, what I'm coming up to now on the left is going to be the Volunteer Village, also known as the Village. Um, there's a lock on the gate. Oh, luckily it's not locked because I don't live down here and I don't know the code. So I was worried I wasn't going to be able to get in. Thanks to some people leaving it unlocked. Man. So basically, this is it. This is where volunteers stay. When they get here, some more showers, some trash cans over there, pretty cool. A little fire pit, a pathway leading down. 
And these are all the volunteer cabins. So everyone stays in these. Very basic. Little garden somebody put together. Another little garden. That's a cool one. So yeah, basically, this is this is where all the volunteers stay. Everybody's just stocked up here down in the village. Lots of fun for the volunteers. Everyone gets to know each other. They're always hanging out together and stuff, having good times, clothes out on the line. You know, just some, some good old fashioned living. Yeah. You know, There you go. That's a walk around a volunteer village. But yeah, so that's uh, that's basically it, guys. Like this is, that's it. I mean, I showed you a lot of stuff. There's some things that I obviously didn't show you, like some of the troops I didn't get to. But uh, it's all the same to an extent. And you see most of those in the other episodes. I just sort of wanted to give you a lay of the land um, and an idea of, you know, how people live, what the enclosures look like, all that good stuff. So now I'm heading back up the road to the cottage. And yeah, every morning those volunteers have to walk from that village where I'm walking from all the way up this hill. And again, double that to get to the cottage so that they can have their breakfast and their lunch and their dinner. That's where they've got their Wi-Fi, their electricity. That's where they hang out and do their stuff. There's other cottages um, around, like not cottages, sorry. So the cabins for people to stay in. There's one right there. See that? There's another one right here. These are like more of the luxury cabins. Um, some of them have electricity, bigger beds, bigger areas, more isolated for people who don't want to stay in the village with a bunch of people having fun all night. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't know what else to say, really. Watch the other episodes. Enjoy them. Uh, I hope everything's going all right with you guys. Let me know what you thought of the video in the comments below. Uh, remember to like and subscribe. Remember if you want to buy some cool t-shirts like this awesome one I got going right here. They don't come with this cool little fluffy thing, but there are a couple of different varieties and hoodies and all that stuff. You can buy those all on our Teespring, uh, just like teespring.com slash stores slash vervet dash forest because their URL system is real complicated. Um, but yeah, I don't know what else to say. If you want to donate, you want to volunteer, all that stuff, just go to our website, vervet.za.org, V-E-R-V-E-T dot Z-A dot O-R-G. That's where you got to go. I say Z now because I've been here for so long. And when I say Z, people look at me crazy. It's like, if I say water, like water, right? Because I'm from California and I say water. I get looked at like I'm insane. I have to say, can I please have some water? Water. And then it's all good. So those little things. Those little complicated things in life. Water versus water. What's the right way to say it? Water or water? Water. Water. <laughs> okay, I've lost it. See you guys later. Bye.